uh, Freak to the stage. Freak is uh, obviously a very legend in the PHP space. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Freak's talk is fantastic functions and where to find them, which is an intriguing uh, title. So um, look forward to knowing exactly what's going on. So thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Paul. Yes, Freak. <laughs> Enjoy the day. Thank you. Thanks. Well, good morning, everybody. Man, those lights are blinding. There's a lot of you. Uh, yeah, it's great to talk at this conference. Uh, I've been here a couple of times. I think the first time I visited here was uh, 10 years ago. And it's great to see that this conference is, uh, is still running. So um, for people that don't know me, I'm uh, Freek. I'm a partner and a developer at a company called Spasi. I have a blog, freek.dev, where I write about uh, modern PHP development and Laravel. I'm also active on X, my handle is freekmurze, and I'm also on Mastodon on the PHP uh, social uh, server. Um, before heading into the talk, I want to say a few words about the open source work that my company does. We currently have about 300 packages registered on Packagist. They have now been downloaded for 900 million times in total. They are being downloaded for 45 uh, million times a month, which means we will hit the 1 billion mark in a couple of months. Um, you can find a big list of everything that we do in open source on our company uh, page. There's a special license on our packages. If you install one of them and it gets to your production environment, you are required to send us a postcard. So this is a licensed postcard where and uh, we get postcards daily to our office, but we're currently missing about 999 million postcards. So <laughs> let's hope that they, they will come as well. And you can visit uh, yeah, our website to uh, uh, see ones uh, that we uh, do have. OK, with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about PHP. So, um, once in a while, you get like a blog post or people saying on Twitter, hey, PHP is dead, just don't use it anymore. But I think people that are saying that, they just aren't paying attention to PHP. Uh, PHP still powers like a big percentage of everything happening on the web, and we have amazing uh, frameworks and, uh, and projects in PHP, such as Symfony, Laravel, WordPress. And we have amazing features coming to our language each year. So this is a slide with newish kind of features which have been introduced kind of recently. Uh, native enums, short closures, null coalescence operator, tight properties and more. And we've also seen massive performance uh, improvements in our language. Certainly if you're coming from PHP 5, the step to 7 uh, was pretty amazing. The step to 8 also had like a lot of performance improvements. So I think that PHP is in a very uh, good, uh, good shape. Um, and I think one of the key components uh, of the, the healthy PHP ecosystem is, of course, Composer, which needs no introduction uh, today. I still remember being here 10 years ago that there was like a session about Composer introducing it to the community. I guess such a session isn't needed uh, right now. Of course, um, Composer allows you to pull in third-party code, and this has resulted in a massive amount of packages. But do you know how many packages uh, there are? On the Packages uh, website, there are actually statistics on this. And there are about 400,000 uh, uh, available packages and 4.3 4 million versions of them. And the absolute number is already mind-boggling, but, but that isn't uh, the, the most important thing. The most important thing is the growth of that graph. It is still going up. So, um, I think this is uh, like one of the most important things that you can see that the ecosystem is still growing. And I got another graph um, for you. The packages installed per month, which is also going up. And don't mind that drop off uh, at the end. It's not PHP is dying, it's just the current month that is still uh, tallying up. And we take a look at the numbers here then we can see that the package installed is at a staggering 100 billion uh, installed packages, which is yeah, absolutely mind-boggling. So I think the PHP ecosystem is in a very good position. Uh, the language is there. It's a flexible language. 
And you also see uh, people that work on community projects that they take a look at other programming communities uh, as well. And in this talk, I want to show you some surprising ways to show PHP and some interesting community projects which have been influenced by uh, other languages. We're going to talk about Termwind, about concurrency, Livewire, and a uh, kind of spicy thing, maybe uh, a thing called Invade. So first up, Termwind. So um, I guess some of you know uh, Tailwind. Tailwind is a CSS uh, framework, a CSS utility framework. So it provides little utility classes that you can put on HTML elements to style those elements. You can, for instance, have a div and say uh, a class is text blue uh, to make uh, the text blue in, in there. You can put some margins, some, some padding there with like little, little classes. And this is meant uh, to, be, uh, to, be, uh, to be used in the browser where you style stuff. But what if we could just use this in the terminal? And let me give you a little demo of that. So I've prepared a little application here. And let me put, uh, oh, not the terminal, but uh, I got one here, iTerm aside. And let's execute uh, this command to see what, uh, what we get. So I'm going to execute termwind. And here you can see we have, yeah, welcome to, to my command. And it's like in a traditional way. But you can also do it differently. Termwind provides a render function, which uh, can accept a view. And I already have a viewer, CLI info. Let's go to that, that view here. Welcome to my awesome command. If I execute that, then I get welcome to, uh, to my awesome command here. Let's now try to style this with Termwind. So I've already uh, installed Termwind here. So I'm going to wrap this in a div. So this is already kind of strange that we use like HTML to, to style our stuff. Nothing changed here. But let's now do class and let's do uh, background blue. And let's see what, uh, what happens here. My background is now blue. Let's style it a little bit more. We're going to make the text white to make it a little bit more interesting. Then maybe we can um, yeah, add some, some some padding here. Let's take a look. We have some padding, maybe some margin to make it a little bit nicer. Yeah, like that. Maybe we can also do the full width. So now the blue is going to, to the end. And maybe let's also uh, center the text so it's centered. And yeah, now I've used like a front end kind of idea. And I've used it in the, in the back end, which is, I think, uh, pretty nice. Um, let's go back to the slides here. So that is Termwind. It's used to make your CLI commands very pretty. It's a, a community project by uh, Nuno Maduro. Um, Termwind itself is framework agnostic, so you can use it in any project. And if you use Laravel, uh, it's already uh, included as a dependency uh, with Laravel, because Laravel uses this under the hood to, uh, to style uh, their commands. OK, next, concurrency in PHP. So um, I guess most of you use PHP in this way. You have PHP scripts that run from the beginning to end. You get a request to come in, you got a response, and that's it, and it stops. But in the JavaScript world, they also tend to do a lot of asynchronously uh, programming. So let's take a look at how we can do this in PHP. And of course, you can do this in PHP as well. We have wonderful uh, packages and frameworks for this as well. In MPHP, you can do it uh, like this. Here we define a promise, and we do a map uh, in parallel. Uh, there's also the amazing React PHP uh, project, which allows you to define a loop, um, and it uh, allows you to um, define events uh, on loop, what should, should happen when, and then, then start the loop. Um, and I thought it might be fun to show a way of how this works on the There are multiple ways uh, to uh, make this work technically. And I also like to share an easy way uh, to, get, uh, to get started with this. So let's go to my demo application uh, here again. 
And I have a couple of more commands here. The four commands. Um, I'm going to get my little debugger here. Um, and let's go through this, through this code. So here we have a variable, take the blue pill. And if it is true, uh, this text will be sent to Ray. Ray is this little debugger helper here. And if it's not true, it will send this text. I've taken the red pill. So let's, uh, let's execute this. So I'm going to fork one here. I have taken the blue pill, because this is true, right? And if I do this to false, and I rerun it again, I've taken the red pill. Now, I don't want to choose between the two. I want to have both pills. Can you think of a value I can put here so both this branch and this branch will be executed? And I promise you there is a way to, to do this, which must feel very, very strange. So the way that you can do this is with a, a function called process control fork. And let's see uh, what happens if we execute this now. Now I have taken both the blue pill and the red pill uh, together, so I didn't have to choose. Now, how, how does this, uh, this work? So process control uh, fork uh, this function, it will actually fork your PHP process into two. And if you are the main process, uh, if you are the process that is being forked, that function will return zero, which is like a falsy value. And if you're the child function, it will actually return the process ID, which is a true T value. So we're actually executing it twice. So let me uh, show you that. Uh, finished, like that. And if I run it now, then you see that we finished it, uh, finished it twice. So that is basically a way of how we can um, uh, make stuff run simultaneously. Now, there are a lot of functions in that process control family, but I don't have time to showcase, uh, to showcase them all. Um, I do have uh, something else to, uh, to show you, and that is uh, a package that we've made uh, at SPASI that uses those functions. So it's, it's the fork package, and if I take a look at uh, the fork um, source code, then we should see here the process control uh, function uh, being used. And what you can do with this fork package is you can just new up an instance, and then you can pass as many closures as you want um, to the run functions, and they will all uh, work simultaneously. So if I run this command, so this sleep function, it will send to Ray start sleeping, it will sleep, and then it will say waking up from sleep, and in total, it will take five seconds, because all of these will run simultaneously. So we're all starting to sleep and we're waking up. So these are um, working simultaneously. Now, working on this talk, I found something, some interesting behavior here. So let's uh, maybe uh, make this a little bit more simpler. And let's maybe just um, send the seconds to Ray and maybe change this a little bit up so they're a little bit uh, random. And let's now run this again and see what, uh, what we get. We get one, two, three, four, five. So this is basically like a sorting function. It's, it's the worst ever. Don't use this in, uh, in production. But it's actually also the simplest implementation. This is like the sleep sort. <laughs> but don't, don't, uh, don't use it. But I thought it was like nice, uh, nice behavior to have. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the time here. Okay, I'm still on time. Um, let's go back to the slides. I don't need this one. Let's go to, uh, or let's maybe just see what, uh, what we've seen here. So uh, concurrency in PHP, it is definitely possible. There are some uh, great options uh, for you to get started. And if you need like a very lightweight solution, you could opt uh, to use our little fork. Uh, package. Okay, next up, LiveWire. So, LiveWire is a package that allows you to build a dynamic frontend without coding any JavaScript at all. It's a, a library uh, developed by a very smart guy uh, called uh, Caleb Porzio, 
And he didn't come up with this idea on his own. This is, again, a package that was influenced by another ecosystem. And in this case, it was the Elixir uh, ecosystem. So this is inspired by a package uh, called Phoenix Live View, which is an, uh, an Elixir package. So how you bring interactivity traditionally to, uh, to a web page is that you build your, um, um, your page using JavaScript. If you need some data from the server, you probably have uh, an API call, which you, uh, uh, which you uh, call via, via Ajax uh, to, get, to get some data, and then use uh, JavaScript to render uh, that data. With LiveWire, this happens a little bit differently. With LiveWire, um, it will render HTML on the server side. It will send that HTML um, via JavaScript to the browser, and the JavaScript part of LiveWire will change uh, the uh, HTML in the DOM to the new HTML. Um, you'll, see it in, uh, you'll see it in action. I'll, I'll show it to you now. So let's maybe go to Safari. And I have like this, the very simplest example of LiveWire here. So it's just a basic counter. If I press plus one, uh, this goes up. And if I uh, do minus one, this goes down. And to get this behavior, I didn't have to write a single line of, uh, of JavaScript at all. Now let's take a look at what happens here um, in the over the wire. If I press this button, we're not getting a full page refresh. There's no um, uh, API uh, for this to, to get the state of the counter or something. Um, we just have like a, an update um, um, a call that is being made, which was initiated by LiveWire itself. And you can see that LiveWire just rendered the HTML server side and the JavaScript part of LiveWire just replaced uh, the, the part that needs to be, to be changed. There's actually a lot of uh, magic happening uh, under the hood, so LiveWire only changes the stuff in the DOM that really needs to be, uh, to be changed. Now let's take a look uh, at how this is, uh, is implemented. So let's maybe go to the, uh, to the routes file of uh, this, uh, this project. So I was on the, uh, the count uh, URL, which um, is powered by this, uh, this counter view. In this counter view, we have here the title counting with Laravel, and that uh, this part here, that is a LiveWire component. So it's LiveWire counter. Now, a LiveWire component has, uh, traditionally, it has two parts, a view part and a PHP part. Let's maybe take a look at the view part first. So here we have the value of the counter, and then here we have a variable count, um, which we're going to take a look at uh, in a minute. And we have here the two buttons, which have a special directive called wire click on it with a name. And whenever we click this, LiveWire will actually call the function with that name in the PHP class counterpart of this, uh, this component. So let's take a look at the PHP class that backs this view. It is the counter component. It has a render view which uses that view that you just saw. That count uh, variable here, um, it corresponds with like the counting that is on the component itself. So this is the state of the component. So on the view, we had add and subtract here. We also have these functions here, add and subtract, which change the state of uh, of this component. And whenever the state of the component changes, LiveWire will actually re-render uh, that view. And because the counter has gone up, the rendered HTML will have changed, and uh, that changed HTML will be sent to the browser. So it's actually very, very uh, simple to do as a, as a programmer. Now, this is uh, a very simple example. You probably are not going to write counters for your website. But you can have stuff like this, um, where you have like a search that is powered uh, by LiveWire. So here I have some quotes in my database, and I can just type, and um, this has like auto-completion or like um, 
like a result list without having a full page refresh. And also for this, I didn't need to code up any um, JavaScript at all. Let's take a look at uh, that uh, component. So it is the search component. Um, here we have a new directive. So this is that little input field. We have here a wire model, which is tied to searching for, and searching for that is a variable that is in the component that, uh, that backs uh, this view. Um, and here we have, uh, we are listing all of the quotes. We're rendering them in a list. Let's take a look here. So whenever we type something in that input box, Laravel will put it in uh, the searching for variable. And because this changes, the component will be re-rendered. Um, and if you take a look at the quotes here, um, which get passed to the view, it uses that searching for to render, uh, to get stuff from, uh, from the database. Quote here is a model. And that is basically everything that I need to do to make this interactivity work. It is that simple. Now, you can, you can make this idea go a little bit further as well. So in Vue and in other uh, front-end frameworks, they tend to have like the behavior together with the HTML. So this is from the Vue docs, where you have uh, like a script up top which uh, contains the behavior of a component, and at the, top, uh, at the bottom you have the template which has the HTML. Now, you can do this with LiveWire as well. It's an, it's an optional, uh, optional syntax, so you don't have to write it that way, but it's kind of cool that you can. It's the functional way of uh, writing things. And it might seem a little bit strange at first sight to, to have this. So this is the functional uh, version of that counter component uh, that you saw. We have like a little bit of state. We have functions in there, but they are now tied up with like a closure that is in a named variable. And this one just also works, but it's, it's much shorter uh, to write. And I also have like the functional uh, search component uh, as well, where, yeah, here is all of that behavior you saw in the class together in the file with, uh, with the HTML. And I kind of like that idea. Um, this is like a principle called locality, where you put like things that work together and should change together, together in a file so you can easily work on it. But if you don't like this idea, uh, that's, that's fine. This is an optional way of um, writing uh, LiveWire uh, components. OK, let's go back to the slides here. So LiveWire is a way of um, providing interactivity without having to write, uh, write JavaScript. It works with uh, rendering HTML and sending that over the wire. Uh, LiveWire is Laravel specific, uh, but the idea can be ported to all other ecosystems as well. And I believe in Symfony, they're working on this as well. It's uh, called Symfony Live Components. And if you want to know more about LiveWire, uh, head over to livewire.laravel.com. Uh, okay. The last thing, and this one is maybe a little bit spicy. It's a, a thing called, um, called Invade. So um, the Python uh, community, uh, I think in Python 2, it, it just doesn't have private variables at all. And I guess everybody here likes private variables uh, because of the, the protection that it, that it brings. But private variables are not as private as, uh, as you might think. Uh, I thought it might be fun to just try to read private properties in PHP, and in fact, I've made a package called invade, which makes reading uh, private properties and calling private methods um, yeah, very, very easy. I don't know if you should use this, but uh, it's cool that, that you can. All right, let's uh, demonstrate and see how that works. So I have uh, an invade uh, command here. Um, I'm going to bring up uh, my little debugging helper here again. So here we have a class, my class, which has a private property. It also has a private function, right? Um, when I call my private property, uh, that, uh, that just uh, doesn't work. Yeah, PHP Storm already um, um, gives me a message of, uh, of this. Let's uh, in invade this. And of course, I get an exception, cannot uh, access private property. But if I just wrap it in, invade, 
then I get like, uh, yeah, that's that secret property. Uh, also, when I have here my private methods uh, in here, which I, if I don't use invade, then I'm gonna get an exception, this is private. But if I wrap it in invade here, then it should work, secret result. That's how easy it is to uh, overwrite uh, private stuff. Let's see how this works, because that is the interesting part. So if I take a look at uh, this function, it will actually wrap uh, the object that you give it in a class called invader. Um, and it will actually use uh, some reflection. Is my sound gone? Or is it... Um, Okay, maybe the technical guys is better. Okay. Okay, so we wrap it uh, in this invader uh, class. We use some reflection here. And because on the invader class there aren't any properties um, defined, whenever you call something on it, this magic getter will be, um, will be called. Um, we will try to get the property from the original uh, object. We are going to say, hey, make it accessible, which is like the equivalent of, yeah, just don't mind the private keyword and just get the value of it. And that is basically how that works. It also works with setters. And um, with functions, it just works the same. We're just going to use reflection to turn off um, that the behavior of private and just invoke that method uh, as, uh, as usual. So I thought this is like a nice example of how you can use uh, reflection in, uh, in PHP. Now, it's not because you can use this that you, you should use this. I think in most majority of cases, uh, you shouldn't use this. Maybe in some kind of testing or as some kind of special scenario, this, this could be useful. Um, but in normal circumstances, don't, uh, don't use this. I just, want to, um, I just wanted to give you this example to see that you can do a lot with reflection in PHP. You can bend it a little bit uh, to your will. Um, but if you do need to use invade, uh, that's the repo on, uh, on GitHub. So, Here's my thoughts on how we can improve uh, the PHP ecosystem or whatever ecosystem you're in. I think you should always keep like an, an open mind and also take a look at the other ecosystem because all of the things that I showed you now are like things that are influenced by other ecosystems. And I think we can all just take like the best parts of uh, the other ecosystems and, and keep on repeating that and then PHP will stay like in the good position uh, than it is now. And I think this not only works for PHP, but for uh, every uh, ecosystem. There are a couple of talks uh, at this conference uh, which uh, also have that idea, um, which uh, talk about things that are influenced by other, uh, by other ecosystems. Uh, so definitely uh, go and watch uh, these talks. Um, that is everything that I have for you. I hope that you will have a great conference. Thank you.